Do you want to learn advanced moves like the planche or front lever, but you feel that it's impossible? That's absolutely okay, because the truth is that you should not start with these exercises. Same as with other moves, no matter how much you like the muscle up or the one-arm chin up, until you don't have the proper basics, they will seem impossible. In static exercises it can be different, but in reality, there is an order of exercises you should follow to ensure the maximal improvement. In this video, I'm going to show you the first static exercise you should start with, the L-sit. What's up guys, it's Adam from GymnasticsMethod.com. If you don't want to miss my videos about bodyweight training and lifestyle, please subscribe and click on the bell. Thank you. And if you want to get access to all the Gymnastics Method workout programs, tutorials like planche, handstand or muscle up, nutrition guide, daily workouts and much more, click the link below and become a member now on GymnasticsMethod.com. So, L-sit. The L-sit is a static exercise which puts your whole body under tension, it helps to train your nervous system for the more advanced moves and you can master it relatively fast. You will feel its transfer effect later with many exercises, that's why I recommend to start doing this first. If you have serious goals in gymnastics training or calisthenics, this exercise is a must. The L-sit improves scapular stability, your upper body and core strength, which are the key areas not only in calisthenics in general, but in case of static exercises as well. You can do this exercise on parallels, P-bars, deep bars, even on two chairs, or on the ground or rings. In general, parallels or chairs are great options for beginners because you have more room for your legs. With this exercise, you can experience for the first time what it's like to hold your entire body and use several muscle grooves statically at once. This will be a heavy load for your nervous system at first, that's why I mentioned that it's worth following a reasonable order with the static exercises. You have to contract and hold your muscles in a certain position, there is no change in muscle length during the exercise, you just have to keep the tension at a certain point continuously. If you consider that in gymnastics, holding a static element on the rings for 2 seconds is already acceptable, you can imagine how hard these exercises are. Of course, gymnasts tend to hold these elements for longer, but you can see how much of a load it is if only a few seconds is a good level. These are of course much more difficult exercises in most cases and gymnasts usually can hold them for much longer, but we are not talking about minutes either. For lower intensity exercises, it's worth to do longer holds because it's pretty easy to improve and you can build a strong foundation for the more advanced moves. So the nervous system effect is significant in these positions, but don't think that they don't need muscle mass or have no muscle building effect. They have. Basically, the load you need at the time that reaches the stimulus threshold you need is going to result in muscle growth along with nervous system development. With the static exercises you will also see muscle development to a certain level as with dynamic exercises such as push-ups, pull-ups and so on. With that being said, let's see which muscles are working during the L-sit. The pecs and lats pull down the shoulders and arms together during the scapular depression. With the right implementation, the trapezius slightly pulls back the shoulders and keep your posture in the right position. The abs are fixing the hip position with their contraction. The hip flexors and quads help to create the hip flexion and the extended knee position. The triceps provide the straight and tight arm position. The forearm muscles help to keep the balance and stabilize the position and the calves help to keep your feet pointed and fix the whole position with tightness. Before we check the progressions, let's see what are the prerequisites of the L-sit. Essentially, scapular stability, flexibility and core strength. These are the most important. However, as I mentioned in my previous videos, it's worth to prepare your wrists and elbows as well for all exercises in support. I made videos about wrist and elbow preparation besides many others, so check out the prehab series on the channel after this one if you're interested. Let's start with the flexibility. For the L-sit, you need the basic posterior chain mobility. In this one, for most people, the hamstrings are the weaklings. To improve your hamstrings or posterior chain mobility, you can use several exercises and methods. If you're interested in three types of stretching you should do, check out my video about that. Even if you do only the dynamic stretches with a proper warm-up, you can improve your posterior chain mobility a lot, but you can use the PNF method or loaded progressive stretching. If you can touch the ground with your fingers, you probably won't have problems with the L-sit. Besides the mobility, the basic joint preparation of the wrists and elbows, the next area you should prepare are the scapulas. It's actually really simple. You need to do scapular depressions in support. In the beginning, you can do it with your legs on the ground, then with your whole body weight on P-bars or two chairs. 
Pay attention to the locked elbows and the full range of motion. The next area you should prepare is the core, the hip flexors and quads, which you can do with one exercise, the leg raises in pike sit. I made a whole video about this exercise where I tell you the details, why is it super effective, even if it's really uncomfortable. So, if you have the basic flexibility, joint preparation, especially the scapular stability and the core strength I mentioned, then you have everything you need for a perfect L-sit. You just need to connect the dots and use all I mentioned at the same time, this is the challenge of it. Let's see the key points of the L-sit. Get in support shoulder width or slightly wider on the floor or on any equipment I mentioned. Depress your scapulas and keep your upper body in a neutral, straight position, don't protract or retract your shoulders. Concentrate on the depression. Keep your head in line with your upper body. Raise your legs closed, straight and tight. Your legs should be at least 90 degrees to your trunk. Keep your upper body and hips in line with your arms. From the side, your hips should not be behind the line of your arms. When you're raising your legs, your pelvis may move backward, but avoid that and push it forward in line with your arms. In the right position, you will feel your triceps contracting even more. Breathe normally through your nose during the exercise, don't hold your breath. This is the right implementation. In many cases, people with the right basics just need to try the L-sit and they can do a pretty good one even for the first time. The preparations I mentioned are crucial and help a lot if you want to do a proper L-sit. But if you need progressions, I'm going to show you the most effective ones right now. In the L-sit, the biggest challenge is to hold your legs fully extended with the proper scapula strength, so we need to think about that, get familiar with the position and lengthen the leverage while building the strength. This progression is great to get familiar with the full L-sit position, raising only one leg at the time. Lock your elbows, depress your scapulas and do alternate leg raises with tight, straight knees and pointed feet. Do at least 10 reps each leg 3 times. This is the first step where you need to hold your entire body weight with your legs tucked in. This is the shortest leverage you can do. Pay attention to the key points I mentioned, don't let your pelvis to move backward and do 20 to 30 seconds hold 3 times. In this progression, with one leg at the time, you can extend your legs to the full acid position. You can do dynamic reps or static holds with each leg. Do at least 10 to 15 seconds hold each leg three times. After the half extended leg acid, this is another transition to reach the goal. Here, you need to do knee extensions from tuck acid to full acid. Try to hold the full acid position for one to two seconds during each rep and do at least 6 reps 3 times. Another option to reach the full acid position is the leg raises to L-sit, which you can do on P-bars or on a higher surface that will be easier, or on parallettes, which will be a bit harder but manageable. Try to hold the full acid for a few seconds with each rep as well. Do at least 6 reps 3 times. After these progressions, you should be able to hold at least a few seconds L-sit. If you want to increase your time, a great method is to decrease the leverage in a set. So if you are able to hold the L-sit for 3 seconds, then immediately after that, bend one of your legs and hold it longer, then bend both tucked in and hold a bit longer again. With this method, you can strengthen your muscles and nervous system to get used to the longer time under tension. How many seconds should you hold the L-sit for? I personally consider 15 to 20 seconds a decent level. Of course, you can go up to 30 seconds as well. I don't think going beyond that is reasonable. So, this will be the L-sit, the exercise I think everyone should start with in the world of static exercises. If you're interested in the complete proven to work gymnastics method system, you want to learn all the most effective and iconic gymnastics and calisthenics exercises with the proper sets and reps, and you want to get the shredded physique of a gymnast, Click the link below and join now on gymnasticsmethod.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did so, please like, share and write a comment what do you want to see in the next videos. If you don't want to miss the new videos, subscribe with notifications on and see you next week in the next video.